Assalamu alaikum. You are all welcome to Abu Jandal. If you look at the board, you will see Sayyid Lana Ron Zat al Lahab. This is the third verse of Surah Al Masad. I recall that in the previous episode, we had completed the second verse Ma Abna Al Humaluhu wa Ma Kasab. If you have not watched that, you can click on the link above to watch the explanation of that and how we're able to draw out some Arabic rules and the ways we can put some of the words in that verse into using. And as usual, today we want to continue with the third verse. Here we shall be doing the same thing by bringing out each of the words, explaining their grammatical functions and how we can put it into our usage, our day in, day out usage. Um, what we are going to be doing today is that we are going to be looking at some specific um, explanation of each of the words here. The first is the scene you can see here, sa. Do you know this a word? Yes, we'll talk about this. Then the second, we'll also talk about yasla. Then we talk about Naron, Naron, from Narun, that is fire. Then we also talk about Zata, Zata. Then lastly, we talk about Lahabun, Lahabun. Now let's begin with the first um, word we want to look at here, which is the Sa. This scene is called Harfu Istikbal, Harfu Istikbali, which means a futuristic um, particle. This particle is the one we use with the present tense when we want to talk about the future. An example when I say adhabu, it means I am going. If I want to say I will go, how do I say this? I will simply bring the futuristic um, particle which is a scene and I will say sa adhabu, I will go. So if I want to say she will go, I will say satadhabu, she will go. So when next you want to um, utter a futuristic statement, simply bring the scene and make an addition of the verb you want to use, like saakulu, I will eat. Sayakuluna, they will eat. So this letter is called harfustikbalin, and grammatically we say harfustikbalin, mabniyun al al -fatah. This is a futuristic particle which is built upon fatha because you can see fatha upon it and this is indeclinable. You cannot change it to si or su. The next word now is the yasla. This yasla is the from Philma Mudori, the present tense of solar. And solar um, basically means to burn. That's why we can say solar lahma. He burned the or he roasted the meat solar lahma bimana shawahu he roasted the meat so here the solar um, means in this place means what to cast something to the fire so Allah says sayasla he will burn he will burn he will burn meaning he will be thrown into he will be thrown into so solar is used for Throw in as well as burning, so throw it into the fire. So we can say Solahu Naro, Solahu Naron. He threw him in a bimana al Kahu Naro. He threw him into the fire. So Solah. Allah says, Sayasla, he will burn in. So this is the usage of the solar. The next word now is the word Naron. We can say Naron, it is Naron originally, but here it is appearing as the object of the sentence, which you mean by Maf'ulun Bihi. That is why it is pronounced as Naron. Sayasla Naron, meaning he will burn in the fire. Sayasla Naron. So Naron has a lot of usage. We use it day in, day out. Now, you can see there is a saying that says, La Dukhana Bila Narin. There is no smoke without fire. So you can say this. There's no smoke without fire. We say it in English a lot. You can also say it in Arabic. La dohana bila narin. There is no smoke without fire. Meaning there is no cause without, or, sorry, there is no effect without cause. There is nothing that happens without a reason. So la dohana bila narin. You can repeat it. La dohana, la dohana bila narin. La dohana bila narin. You can make this when you're speaking. Another way we can use Nar, we can also say um um sobba zeta finari. He poured fuel into the fire, or he poured oil into the fire. You know what this means? When somebody aggravates a, a situation, there is a trouble already, and somebody wants to aggravate it, then he he say he utter words which will make this to become a serious matter. So you can use this and say sobabta sobabta zeta finari. You poured fuel into the fire. 
a burning fire already and you poured fuel into it so that it will roast people we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us so the word narun another way we can say i can say um our code and narrow he he our code and narrow okay let's let's use it this way. our code and narrow that means him he um he how do i put it he put the fire up our code and narrow he put it up so i can say our code and narrow how our code our code and narrow harba wolfitan he he puts up the fire of war and fitna and trials so you can use this this naron in this way but in this in this place in this one verse naron grammatically is coming as the mafulum bihi the object of the sentence mansub carrying fatha and the sign of this um of this accusativeness is that it is carrying fatha. So yes, sayas la naron he will burn in the fire or he will be thrown into the now coming to the next word which is that that is um originally that and this is the mu'annath of the so zu means sahib which simply means possessor so zu when you use zu example you can say zu malin possessor of wealth owner of wealth that is for a male when i'm referring to a female i will say that to malin meaning possessor of wealth among the female when you're talking to a female so if it, if it is plural you say thou for males and thou for females now this that could also have other meanings like it could mean direction i can say jealous that al shimali was that al yamin he sat in direction of from the on the left and the right i said in the right and the left so jealous that al shimali was that al yamin he sat in the left in the direction of the left and also in the right this that could also have another meaning which is as that means self that is oneself i can say to be that i came by myself meaning i was present i can also say kunto hadiran be that i was present by myself another way we can also use this is that that could also means alhal alhal meaning situation condition i can say aslaha that him he did what he um he reconciled that their the condition their condition he reconciled what is between them of maybe um they, they are bad condition if someone is not they're not in a communicating um, condition they don't communicate and you reconcile between them that is that could also be used in this um sense that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa aslihu that him and reconcile that which is among them so that would also be used in this um in this um sense another way so that could be used that could also be used to mean maybe once upon a time like when i say that a lay latin that is once upon a night that a him once upon a morning that a masain once upon a, an evening that a yomin once upon a day like in the hadith of umar radiallahu anhu when the hadith of jibril when jibril Allah, Isa, alayhi salam descended and President Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting with his companions, Umar radiallahu anhu says, That a yawmin is tola alayna rajulun shadidu bayad is sayab. That once upon a time they were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used that a yawmin once upon a time. So that could be used in this sense. So that in this um, verse is coming as the not. That is an adjective qualifying the previous word recall that the previous word says sayas la naron he will burn or he will be thrown into the fire that the fire of the fire which possesses so that possession is the not here the adjective qualifying the fire so here we are qualifying the fire which that uh, la have been so that here is coming as a natun mansub alamatunasbihi al fatatu zahiro the nat is coming with fatha because it is qualifying naron and the now it is qualifying also has fatha so the last word is la have been so lahab simply means flame 
Lahab is um, that, type, that part of the fire which comes out when the fire is raging, the flames of the fire. This Lahab could also be used for rivers or seas when they are waving so much, when the waves are so high. You can also say that the Lahab, the Lahab of the river. So Lahab is used as flame. And Lahab here is coming as the Modofun Elei, the possessed. That uh, Lahabin. That is the one which has Lahab. Subhanallah. Allah says, Sayyid Lahabin. That Allah been. He will burn in the fire of blazing flames. Allah, but who is that? That is Abu Lahab. And we have mentioned in the first episode that this Abu Lahab was the uncle of the Prophet Allah alayhi wa sallam, and he was so harsh towards the Prophet sallam, he caused him a lot of harms. And we also mentioned that the reason why he's being called Abu Lahab is li wajihi because of the shininess of his face and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same word as a punishment for him that that allah so he's called allah and allah is describing the fire that will burn him as the fire which possesses flames and the flames will be very will be burning in the next episode we'll be discussing the next verse where we'll also mention his wife from ratuhu Hamalat al Hatab and his wife, the carrier of firewood. Until then, do make sure you like, share with your friends, and drop your comments at the comment section. Until we meet, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.